All right. Hello. So last time during the live stream, I got asked a question about whether or not I could use the uh, height map supplied for this very handsome, handsome T-Rex fella um, as a normal map. And at the time, so I've actually never done that before. And uh, at the time, I was trying to figure it out. And you should never just try and figure something out live because as you know, it made me look very foolish, which I was. Um, so I went away and I figured out how to do um, to convert a height map into a normal map. Some of you watching this, this is super easy. You've done this a million times. You're like, oh gosh, what a silly thing. But maybe some folks watching this have never done it before either. And this is useful uh, to you if you happen to be Googling how to convert a height map into a normal map in Unreal right now. So if that's the case, um, and so what we're going to do is I'll just uh, jump into the materials of our buddy here. And um, I'll walk you through what's going on and then take you step by step how to create it. So the node that we're working with... And I learned this lesson the last time. I need to be very careful about where my video is in relation to what I'm explaining. So the node that we're playing with here is normal from height map. And I'm actually going to switch scenes so that we can see that better and less of me. Okay, so this is, this is the guy, normal from height map. And what I hadn't realized when I was trying to do this live is that you can't, uh, like normal from height map needs a 2D float object um, being pumped into the height map channel. Uh, and that would be say a texture object. Whereas a texture sample, um, if you tried to pump that in, that's a float three and it says, no, you cannot, I will not receive it. So I did not realize at the time that I had to convert my height map to a texture object. And then I could actually use the normal from height map node. Um, so uh, that's what we're gonna set up. I will just destroy some of this. So what I had before is just this, um, oh, it's just this lovely little grainy texture. And I've got this multiplied into a constant three. Um, and for the benefit of anyone who's actually never set this up before, uh, I might actually go all the way back to the beginning and just create this from scratch. So um, I'm going to create a new material. Uh, to do so, what I'm doing is I right click in the content browser um, and I go to material. And right away, I'm going to go M underscore Trex. Um, if this was a master material, I might go MM. If it was a material instance, I might go MI. Uh, right now, I'm just playing with singular materials and we don't have that many materials. So I'm just going M for material. Um, let's open that up. You see, we've got a whole lot of nothing at the moment. Uh, let's drag in our texture. So I'll just go back to the content browser and I've created my material in the same place as my texture, which makes this very convenient. I could just drag that cracked dirt texture in. And then um, if I just set, if I connect that directly to the base color, uh, that's just a kind of a pale white, which would blow out and be too bright in my scene. So I'm gonna multiply that against the darker color. Um, now a color, is a constant three vector in Unreal. To get to this, I just right click an empty space here and I'm typing in constant and immediately it goes, oh, is this one of the constant vectors that you want? Yes, it is Unreal, it is indeed. Constant three, and I double click on that to get my color wheelie of doom. Um, and I just adjust until I find a color that I like. Kind of get like a bit of an earthy, earthy sandy tone. And then I'm going to be multiplying. So I, if I drag, left click and drag off of this little dongle here on the constant three node. Um, so let's click and drag and then let go. I've got a menu going, what else would you like to do now? Well, I would like to multiply this. So I start typing in multiply, immediately it finds multiply for me. 
Um, and uh, so I'll be multiplying A versus B. We'll bring this texture sample into B and then left click and drag from the multiply dongle into base color. And now this has a base color of sort of a ruddy, I would call that a bit of a ruddy brown. Let's make that a bit more pale. Um, the color doesn't matter, move on, move on. Okay, so uh, now the next step is to use this same texture as a height map and convert that to a normal map. So to do so, I'm actually just gonna copy that texture and paste, so just Control C, Control V into the same space. And I'm gonna right click on that texture and go Convert to Texture Object. That is going to turn it into a float two instead of a float three. And then I'm gonna drag off of that Convert Texture Object and type in Height. And I've got my little normal from height map node there. Now, if I drag this into, if I drag the result into the normal channel right away, you'll see that it is way too strong. It's like really super intense. It's grainy as. Um, and if I were to apply this, I'm just gonna save this material and I'm just going to apply it to the Alembic that I need to reset the material IDs on because there's way too many. So if I just apply that to his face, it's gonna be all like, huh! see how super grainy that is? Let's just get perspective camera up and go, Vroom! oh, that's crunchy, so crunchy. That's like mad crunchy up in here. Okay, too crunchy, too crunchy. So we need to now control the crunch factor of this guy. All right, so let's go find some intensity values we can play with. Also, how much do you absolutely love? Just this sort of like, it's almost subsurface scattering happening up in here. It's just so pretty. I love ray tracing. Okay, let's open up that material again. And there is a normal map intensity node, which is awesome. If I, uh, what we can do is we can use a constant one and a constant one is values between zero and one. It's just like um, between two points. And if I drag that into normal map intensity and you'll see that um, there's this little green check, box, check mark shows up when I hover over normal map intensity. That means, hey, yes, you can connect me. That's totally cool. Go for it, go for your life. So I'm gonna drag that into normal map intensity. And when I've done that, you'll see that the sphere on the left has gone back to the flat texture. So if I adjust the value in this constant and I can do that right below my material preview over here on the left, um, I've got material expression constant value, which is currently set to zero. And if I hover my mouse over that, I get a little arrow button from left to right and I can left click and drag that in one direction to increase the intensity of it. Now you gotta remember, it's not gonna be a perfect normal map because we're converting a effectively 2D image into a, a 3D representation. Um, so it's not gonna be perfect, but it will be some. Let's actually set that to zero, just so I can do a bit of a comparison and we'll come up to our now super smooth skull. I'm just gonna go do a snipping tool and just grab a snap of that face. So we can do a bit of a before and after. We'll go back into the material and let's just do a constant value of one. I'm gonna save that and see what it looks like. All right, so we've got a little bit of We've got a little bit of something happening. If I bring my snipping tool up, you'll see that it goes from this sort of like super flat, smooth plastic looking surface to um, something that's got a bit of depth in it. And you can kind of see the artifacts, uh, but let's just see what it looks like from the actual, actual perspective of the camera. Because if the camera doesn't see the artifacts, then I'm okay. All right, let's go. Sequencer, yeah, we don't see much of nothing, do we? 
Cool, and that is how you set up a height map as a normal map. Ta-da. All right, cool. Ciao. Catch you next time.